30 seconds to go. 20 seconds. 15. 10. Down yellow flag. Warmer arrange. Firing completed. Could I have your reports, please? Firing completed. Reports in. Report to go back to Salisbury, headquarters of the weapons research establishment that controls the Warmer range, longest land range in the Western world. The rocket flight story is told in electronic records, pictures and sounds that have to be turned into answers to scientists' questions by measurement, by calculation through lines on graphs, holes in punch cards. Part of the story, the rocket tells itself. It carries instruments that radio back signals to recorders on the ground. The signals are decoded in bewildering banks of machines that can turn sounds to punch tape and punch tape to figures. These are machines that can almost think, that can do in a few hours work that would take skilled men weeks. The final report, the complete story of the rocket flight, goes to the rocket makers and firers. The Salisbury headquarters are just outside the South Australian capital, Adelaide. Here, security means security for the secret information which can be of vital importance to the defence of Australia. Pass us, please. Thank you. There are seven square miles inside the guided fence, offices, laboratories and workshops for the guided weapons program. Most of the weapons are designed and built by United Kingdom contractors who send them by plane to Australia for final test on the range. Everything that can be done at Salisbury is done here. To maintain men at Woomera costs money, so only essential staff live there. In the establishment workshops, men build and service the elaborate equipment, weave the complicated wiring patterns of guided weapons and the machines that control and record their movements. In the optical laboratory, there is a new 200-inch lens to follow rockets soaring miles into the air. There are laboratories for the work that must be done before firing, testing fuel to drive rockets, testing material to build rockets, testing rocket motors in fixed firings where the rocket can't move. Testing rocket shapes in the wind tunnel, where a 2,000 mile an hour wind tells its story in airwave shapes built up inside the tunnel. Even flight can be tested, in theory, in the fantastic machine, electronically controlled and operated, that can simulate the problems that will be met in practice. It answers to the name of AGWAC. With tests completed, the rockets go to Woomera, usually from next door Edinburgh Field, operated by the RAAF for the Weapons Research Establishment. A Canberra bomber moves out to takeoff. 
A Comet, manned by the RAF Transport Command, taxis in after a flight from England with men, equipment, missiles for test. Bristol freighter takes off for Woomera, heading northwest 300 miles over the farming country, over the waters of the Gulf to the dry semi-desert and, unexpectedly, the town of Woomera, with the salt of the dry island lagoon glittering on the horizon. You could call this an oasis, an oasis built by men, an oasis with all mod cons. There are always people on the move at Woomera. Scientists and technicians arriving for tests. Wives making a welcome return from holiday. People often ask what it's like to live in Woomera, where even water has to be brought by pipeline from the Murray River 400 miles away. It sounds silly to say that it's rather like living in any other town, but that's really the truth. Of course, it gets hot, very hot in summer. But the houses have air conditioning units for coolness and most of the other things you need to be comfortable. Cooking's all electric. Water and sewerage are laid on. I don't think of tents just because you think of deserts. We do the usual things. Mother in the kitchen, father digging flower beds. Tradesmen deliver bread, milk, groceries, and friends drop in for a cup of tea in the cool of the garden. Oh yes, you can have gardens. The soil will grow almost anything if it gets water. Boomer is a complete town. Three churches built mostly by the people living here. The post office is air conditioned, so it's a popular place to meet. We've got our picture theatre, a hall for dancers, department store, not as big as you'll find in the cities, of course, but it's surprising how much they've got. And what they haven't got, they'll get right away from Adelaide. Our hospital has a proud record, 800 babies in five years. The 400 school children get their lessons in air-conditioned classrooms. They do the same courses as the children at school in Adelaide. And for the kiddies, there's a kindergarten with trained teachers and lots of fun for everyone. Not much grows naturally in this country. Salt bush, blue bush, mulga, but they're experimenting to see what will grow. Already there are trees planted to turn our streets into avenues and the grass on the bowling green is a picture although the golfers have to put up with greens of oiled sand. Whatever sport you're interested in, you can probably get a game in Woomera, even swimming. We have a real Olympic pool that feels very good in the heat of summer, complete with a wading pool for the tiny tots. You can see what I mean. Living in Woomera isn't as different as all that from living in any other town. Every morning, buses pick up the men and women to take them from the township to their working places, with their passes. It is four miles to the Woomera technical area, the heart of the range. Woomera got its name from the Aboriginal throwing stick, used to drive spears far, fast and straight. From the headquarters building, Superintendent Woomera Range manages the whole area from the township to the range head 10 miles further on, with beside it Everts Field, the operational strip for the aircraft Jindavik, the radio-controlled Australian plane piloted from the ground. There is no pilot in the plane. It is entirely directed by radio signals. With uncanny smoothness, the plane flies down, answering every move of the controls operated by the pilot at the side of the strip coming into a landing as graceful as any piloted plane could make.
tests are going on all the time. In the technical area, a meteor comes out to take its part in a firing. From the Woomera airstrip, a Valiant takes off for bombing tests on one of the ranges. At Ebbetsfield, another Jindavik wheels out of the hangar. One great advantage of a plane with no pilot is that it can be used as a target, as it will today in testing a guided missile, the Fairy Fire Flash. Armed with Fire Flash, the Meteor will take off from Woomera airstrip, the Jindavik from the strip at the rangehead. They will meet above the range, fighter and target directed from the ground like pieces on a chessboard. Radio links the controller and the ground crew flying the Jindavik with the pilot and the planes thousands of feet above and miles away. Testing a missile is an exact business. Every step has to be checked, cross-checked, checked again. This is scientific research. There is no room for error. Checks completed on Meteor and Fire Flash. The Jindavik is readied for action. The Meteor taxis down the strip, Fire Flash on its wing, ready. The Jindavik goes into position for radio control to take over. No one will touch it until it lands again. Up yellow flags. Telemetry receiving. Jindavik control to Mike 1, turning Jindabek forward, airspeed 220. Airspeed 220. The sound will probably be C Charlie this round. Sound C Charlie. Roger. 220. Airspeed 220. 220. We're clear for firing run. Roger. Approaching sound C Charlie. Would you like to go a bit higher? Negative. I think we'll be all right as we are now. Thank you. Tracking aerial to Mike 1. Tracking OK. Target Jindavik approaching Zone C Charlie now. Roger. 60 seconds, switch four. 60 seconds, firing run. Switch four. Fighter accelerate. Fighter accelerate seconds. 50 seconds, firing run. Fighter is entering Zone C Charlie now. Roger. Fighter entering Zone C Charlie. 40 seconds, switch five. 40 seconds, firing run. Switch five. Jindavik is completing its turn now. 30 seconds, target decelerate. 30 seconds, firing run. Target is in zone Charlie now. Target zone C Charlie. 20 seconds. 20 seconds, firing run. Target is now straight. Roger. 15 seconds. 15 seconds, firing run. Fighter coming up now. 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 Spot on. Give the gentleman a cigar. I'll take that offer. Ah, good chef, yeah, fighter. Look, Mum. No gender vic. Test completed. Over to sub one. Down, yellow flag. At the rangehead, one of the biggest launches is for the rocket Skylark being prepared for firing in a test shop. The rocket was built in England and brought to Woomera for firing. It is designed to drive high above the Earth's surface, radioing back information for scientists. Firing Skylark rockets is part of the range program for the International Geophysical Year.
the head of the rocket, carrying research instruments and the equipment that will radio signal to recorders on the ground, goes into the launcher first. Reports radioed back from Skylark will be important to scientists working on problems of radio, long-range weather forecasting, and flight high into the stratosphere. The body of the rocket is nearly all fuel to drive it upwards, defying gravity in a burst of speed building up to 3,300 miles an hour. Once again, it is a matter of detailed, careful preparation. All the resources of scientists, technicians and skilled observers mobilized for experiment in the sky. All observation posts from Sub-1. Your titling instructions for the Skylark firing. The trial will be 825. Serial number 825. Would you please complete ground check and report ready for action, please? Contraves? Contraves ready. Victor 8? Victor 8 ready. Kenny Theodolite. Kenny Theodolite ready. Emu 2. Emu 2 ready. Doppler. Doppler ready. Radar. Radar ready. Telemetry. All set up here, Jack. Telemetry. Telemetry ready. Timing. Clear launcher, ready for firing. Skylark is on its way, driving to the limits of the world's knowledge, speeding up to the threshold of space.